Hey guys, welcome to Professor Bell's Comic Book University. Guys, I just got finished reading The Midnighter. This book, you know, this is going to be the last book that I read for this week. Tomorrow the new comics come out. And, oh my god, inadvertently, I saved the best for last. The Midnighter. Antius, Antis, uh, I think it's Antius uh, Comics Presents. Uh, Midnight. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I said The Midnighter. Antius Comics Presents Midnight. The, this issue number one. Guys, reading the back of this, this was apparently a, a work of love for a real long time. These guys have been working on doing this and paid off. Absolutely paid off. I demand more immediately. I don't want to wait a month for this. Uh, Tom Hodges did the story and the art. And the publisher is Terry Hodges. Why do I mention the publisher? Because these two, Terry and Tom Hodges, they, uh, they're they they're the creators of this comic, maybe this comic world. Uh, this, whew. Guys, Midnight is a character who starts off, he looks like, a, like Batman a little bit without a cape. So a little bit more utilitarian. He's got the ammo pouches and everything uh, around his belt. But he's fighting a Wan T. If you don't know what a Wan T is, you're not playing enough Dungeons and Dragons. And don't don't correct me on the the pronunciation, please. Unless you're Gary Gygax back from the dead. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he's fighting this giant half man, half cobra. You can't say half snake. He gets mad because there's a difference. And man, really great scenes. Uh, he he doesn't even say the name of the guy that he's fighting. At first, he, he calls him Doc. It means that there's there's some kind of a personal relationship. Much later in the comic, at least midway in the comic, it finally explains that his name is, uh, he's talking to his wife and his best friend since the third grade, who happens to be a world famous doctor who apparently one time gave the, uh, the president, the vice president, excuse me, of the United States, open heart surgery in a bunker in Baghdad under heavy fire. Okay, I likes it. I likes it. And <laughs> she's doing some uh, some surgery on, or some sutures on his back because he got slashed. And uh, the snake's name is uh, Slyther and Dr. Padrig Migan, Midgen. Anyway, he had... This is great. Like, the, the story of this guy. He gives the story of this guy to his wife and, and this, uh, this doctor friend of his. Explains how, you know, he was, it was like a, like the lizard, uh, from Marvel Comics, Dr. Kurt Connors, same kind of thing. He had a incurable, uh, super aggressive, uh, cancer and he was able to cure it, but at what cost? And now he's, uh, constantly turning into a snake man, excuse me, a cobra man. He gets mad when you call a snake man. So, uh, his wife is district attorney, uh, Taryn, Taryn DeVille really weird name for me sorry and yeah guys oh my god this comic like the way that it, it progresses is fantastic it goes right into the action doesn't go into the massive amounts of dialogue it's very neglectful in the dialogue the most of the dialogue is spent for the people of the they're fighting on the roof and down on the bottom there's a restaurant uh open air restaurant these you know snobs are eating and, uh, well, the girl at least is a snob and she's, you know, being rude to the waiter. And at one point she says, darling, there's a tooth in your, uh, drink because <laughs> Midnight knocked out or broke one of the teeth of the, uh, of Slither. Anyway, I'm, I'm way too excited over this. This is like a reaction video for me, except there's no video. It's just the comic. I am hyped and pumped about this. This is great storytelling for a brand new publisher. These guys have been, apparently, they've been busting their humps to get this out. They were supposed to be slated for a, uh, uh, a television series, uh, animated, I think, involving this. They didn't give enough information on it. And didn't quite work out for them because writer's strike at the time. And, oh, man, so between going to other publishers and trying their hand and doing the best they could 15 years later now, this is great. And inside the story, there's something else also. There's apparently some kind of a hero or something, a really jacked uh, guy who who woke up after a 15-year coma. So I'm going to say those two correlate with each other. And it's beautiful because the first thing he said, he's, he's 
sitting down on the edge of his hospital bed, staring outside. His mother comes every every day to visit him, and once a week she brings fresh flowers. This was the fresh flowers day. She walks in, he's sitting up, and he's like, oh my God. And he says, mom, where are the towers? Yeah, because they're in New York. And great way to just really, ah, it puts you in it. It puts you in there, of course, you know, from New Jersey, New York area. Yeah, that's, that, you know, that's a pretty big deal. Possibly across the country, not entirely sure. But the, the idea is that was great. And not just that scene. I mean, pretty much every single scene in here. I mentioned that he's kind of like a Batman character. Well, they've got a Joker character in here also. I guess that the one T was supposed to, uh, Slither was supposed to be like Killer Croc. <laughs> in a way, is because they've got Austin Gordon, a.k.a. Gordo the Clown. Yep. And he puts on face makeup, and he's just a crazy psychopathic killer. He's got uh, 123 counts of murder and 50 counts of grand larceny, uh, totaling more than $46 million, none of which has ever been recovered. And he's got a little retinue of people, including a Harley Quinn uh, kind of character. I don't know if she wears makeup or not, but she's actually more like a Mercy character from uh, Lex Luthor-esque and uh, what do you call it? But, you know, she's his Harley, I guess, and she's really smart and she posed as his lawyer. Kicks a, a police officer so hard in the head, actually turns his head completely around and snaps his neck. Uh, killing the guy. Yeah, messed up, but that's a lot of energy. That's a lot of power. And he escapes because uh, she brought C4 in her attache case. Uh, wow. Guys, I, I'm kind of giving away a bit too much to the comic, and I'd rather you just go out and actually buy the comic. There are some things left in there that's going to be, you know, for backstory. Um, this, whew, this right here, guys. This right here. I expect nothing but good things in the future for this comic, and I can't wait. Can't wait. Guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.